A number of participants representing non-governmental agencies, civil society, and youth representatives met at the Ministry of Infrastructure's conference room in February. The in-person stakeholder meeting was hosted as the island joins a number of countries from the OECS in enhancing the framework for quality and accessibility of sexual and reproductive health and rights services for women and adolescent girls. The focus is on survivors of sexual and gender-based violence and forms part of three main outcomes for the OECS's Build Back Equal project. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George says St. Lucia is privileged to be one of four countries to benefit from this project. And whilst the Ministry of Health has so far received praises for its ongoing programs and efforts, Dr. Belmar is optimistic for growth. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs is grateful to the United Nations Population Fund for the opportunity to participate and benefit from the Build Back Equal project to develop the standards for adolescent health services and to update St. Lucia's sexual and reproductive health policy. This fits in very nicely with the policy of the government on the school health desk, which is part of the government's policies and priorities for health. It gives us the opportunity to strengthen the adolescent health program and also to strengthen the link between community health and health services within the school sector. The four-year project is being implemented around the region by the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, and UN Women. The UNFPA is counting on data from the various countries as they look towards enhancing these various policies as a region. So we are having information from the ground and also having the dialogue with you people who interface with women and girls and men and boys and you know what the challenges are. So as we forge with the, with the policy and the standards, it's coming from a point of information and also we have evidence, it's not just that feeling. Those evidence is very important. The age of consent for accessing health services and sexual intercourse seem to be a recurring topic at the day's session. Miss Arlene Husbands, the consultant engaged to develop sexual and reproductive health policy for St. Lucia, gave some feedback on the regional issue. There are some interesting, um, uh, interesting point that was made, I think by the gentleman here, in terms of when do you intervene? Um, and I think we have to weigh that out. Yes, the policy We'll look at it, but we need to look at some of what, what currently exists in other places that would assist or will lend to a person that, who is 16 that can access the services. And you know, there are things that were happening, good practices that happen around the world, whether or not we are willing to look at those things, like just as the Gillick case is where you can, obviously there's some person who would stand as a legal guardian and assist to make sure but I think it is important for the individuals when we are working alongside the youth to help them to understand the consequences involved. The day's proceedings revealed that the existing laws and policies are in dire need of revision. The one-day workshop was funded by Global Affairs Canada and was touted by the Ministry of Health, who remains committed to strengthening the island's health policies. The ministry is also aware that all stakeholders must be involved for policy to be implemented correctly. Jade Brown reporting for the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs.